Hey, it's our first movie review of 2018. Yeah, I know. Burnt Offerings. Yes. We're going back to the... We're doing more 70s stuff because I love this shit. Yeah, I think that was 1976, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the last one we did, The Legacy, which was also kind of a 70s haunted house kind of movie. This one also a similar type of thing. Probably, oh, well, not probably, it's actually one of my favorite haunted house movies of the 70s, and I feel like it doesn't get, like, I guess it sort of has sort of a small cult following, but yeah. it doesn't get, like, the same love as a lot of the other 70s remember, haunted house movies. I remember seeing trailers for it when it came out, and the trailers scared me. It, this is a yeah. very creepy movie, yeah. I think. Yeah, the trailers scared me, and then when I ended up seeing it later on, yeah, and it's it's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. I like it. Yeah, it's um the interesting thing about it, it's kind of a slow burner. Yeah. Um, you know, which I guess a lot of movies in yeah, the seventies were seventies. That's what it was. But um, you know, I feel like some people that you know are like kind of like we need all this stuff to happen. You know, like might right. think it was kind of boring or something because a lot of it's very subtle. Yeah, I know. I had to have you with me to uh, go pay attention. You see that one? You see that? Remember when that happened? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a because lot of little very, details. Yeah, in the very beginning and very subtle. They don't really explain no. everything. They just kind of like leave subtle little hints that you're supposed to like kind of Yeah, you, you really on. have to pay attention to what you're being shown. And people aren't just saying anything. You just, they're just showing it. Yeah. Like what's happening and in the background and things like that. Yeah. With the house. Yeah. So it's one of those kind of things where you really have to pay attention. Yeah. Now, one of the most interesting things I found about this uh, movie. Now, it's actually based on a novel by Robert Morasco. And I read the novel many years ago because it was in, I don't know how many of you guys remember Stephen King's uh, nonfiction book called Dance Macabre, which was kind of like a series of essays about horror, about what scares you, about his favorite horror novels and things like that. And he had in the back, he had this big long list of what he thought were his uh, favorite hundred horror novels from like the 20th century or, you know, pre-1980 or whatever. And I went through a period over a few years where I was trying to read as many of them as possible. Mm -hmm. So I did actually get around to reading Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco. And it was written in 1973. I remember it was very similar to the movie. I think the end was a little bit different. I remember it being really good. Mm -hmm. But here's the interesting thing. This book and the subsequent film are very similar, similar kind of theme to The Shining. Yeah. And, but the book came out before Stephen King's book, The Shining, came okay. out. So, and Stephen King obviously really dug this book. So because this may have he inspired put, The Shining. So he might, so this right. book might have been one of the things that inspired The Shining. Right. Now, I'm sure it's not the only thing because he's also come out and said, um, you know, Shirley Jackson's Haunting of Hill House was also a big influence on The Shining too. And you can kind of see that also if you read yeah. that book and see that movie as well. But, This kind of theme of house as living entity. Yeah, I guess. Or almost like a psychic vampire. Yeah. That kind of aspect pretty much comes from this. Yeah, or or was the ghost kind of merged, was the house kind of merged with a ghost? Yeah. It could have been that too. Which I guess Haunting of Hill House kind of has that too, but. Yeah, and Shining was kind of like that. Yeah, in a that's way. what I mean. So these At are least all the kind movie, of not so much the book. Yeah, these are all kind of like similar kind yeah. of things. But the I think one of the best things about Burnt Offerings is the cast. Yeah, all star cast. I love the cast of this movie. It is yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Um, you got Oliver Reed as yeah. the dad, and this dude, you know, Oliver Reed's like this big, kind of tough looking British dude. And when I was a kid, I always saw him as like. One drink away from whipping your ass. That's which the way he he, which came was probably uh, the case. He's kind of like a Michael, <laughs> kind of like kind of like Michael Caine, but Michael Caine, he had a different kind of intimid, intimidating factor. You know, Michael yeah. Caine was kind of a little bit more of a intense. This guy was more like physically imposing. There was something about him. He Very- kind of looked like a big. It kind of reminds me of like a big Bruce Dickinson with short hair, <laughs> you know. And Bruce Dickinson's not a big dude; he's about my size, but he looks like he's like a big Bruce Dickinson. That's the way he always, you know, came across. Oliver Reed, and I think I said this to you yeah. when we were rewatching the movie a couple yeah. days ago. I'm like, he's so meaty. He's like a big pork roast. <laughs> oh shit! He's not fat though. He's not no, fat. it's not fat. It's just, just like a yeah. It kind of gorilla like. I think I only noticed it because he's shirtless a lot in this. Yeah. Although, wasn't there another movie where Oliver Reed wrestled the guy, like, naked? I don't know. What movie was that? And they had, I don't know. And then they had sexy-ass Karen Black. 
I love that, Karen Black, yeah. you guys. I love Karen. And Black. she was sexy all the way out into the in, 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 into the nineties, the two thousands too. Yeah, with, yeah, because uh, she was in uh, she some was, Rob Zombie. Rob movies. Zombie movies. Yeah, she yeah. still looked good. She was. Uh, she she held her own for a long time. She is. Yeah. She yeah. she's so cool because she's so weird looking. And yeah, yet somehow, and she's all, she always plays like these kind of like. She's like, kind of like the mutant Barbara Eden. Sort of, the, yeah. The, the Barbara Eden gone But there's bad. something very cool and like very compelling <laughs> yeah. about her. Yeah. Um, oh, and if you guys like, if you really like Karen Black like I do, I uncovered this really cool like TV movie from the late 70s yeah. called, I think it's called The Strange Possession of Mrs. Oliver. And Karen Black is in it. And I think it was written by Richard Matheson, actually. Yeah. And I just kind of stumbled across it one day on YouTube. It used to be. And it's fucking awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so Karen Black is in this. She plays the mom. Yeah. Betty Davis Betty is in Davis this. of all, yeah. She plays uh, Oliver Reed's aunt. Yeah, cool like, old lady. Uh, yeah, she's like a cool old lady. Yeah. And uh, she comes along with them. So the whole... And she does her Betty Davis corniness. It's kind of cool. Her intense acting. I love acting. her character. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the, the yeah. acting in this. But like I said, it was the 70s. Like sometimes the acting is very stagey. I think we talked about this a little bit when yeah. we reviewed The Hand. It's still enjoyable though. But yeah, there, there's something really charming about that yeah. that you can't really replicate like in movies yeah. nowadays. And then you got Burgess Meredith. And, and play- Burgess Meredith is in it too. Yeah, he plays a it- gay guy in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, I he's- guess he's supposed to be gay. Yeah, he's oh, he's yeah. very Paul Lind like Yeah, oh yeah, he was flaming. But he was, he's in it very briefly, yeah. but yeah, so he's in it too. I remember the kid that was in it. God, I want to. I've seen that kid before, and you know what? I was trying to think where I've seen that kid. I can't remember his name, but I think he was in the fucking. Oh, when they did it on Mystery Science Theater, it was like a pilot. San Francisco International. Okay. I'm pretty sure that this is the same kid that tried to fly the airplane, and they had to like talk him down and stuff like yeah. that. It's very funny if you're into MST and you haven't seen that uh, episode, San Francisco International. It was really funny. Oh, and also let me mention before I forget that. Burnt Offerings was directed by Dan Curtis, who actually prior to this was mostly known for TV, uh, most famously for Dark Shadows. And he also directed the very infamous Trilogy of Terror, which also starred Karen Black in multiple roles. But, uh, you know, the most memorable one, obviously, was the one with the little Zuni doll or whatever it was called that uh, came after her. So I thought I would mention that there. So in some ways, Burnt Offerings... Uh, I've seen it criticized as being kind of like TV movie like, like the way it's shot and stuff like that. But I don't know. I still think that's kind of a bullshit criticism because I still think this movie is awesome. But anyway, so the whole entire premise of the movie is that Oliver Reed and Karen Black and the kid and Betty Davis are, you know, a family, the Rolf family. Yeah, extended family. Yeah, And they are renting a summer house. Yeah. And um, it looks like a big old plantation house. Yeah. So they've answered this ad that yeah. these people have put in. We're renting the summer house. It's very reasonable, the ad says. Yeah. But I don't think they put the price in there because they didn't seem to know what it was when they got yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Later on, they tell them, though. Yeah. So they get to this house and they can't believe it. Like, this house is gigantic. Yeah. And this is an actual, I think it's called Dunsmere House or something like that. It's in yeah. Oakland, California, where they filmed it. Right. So it it's looks like a really like, big. It looks like somewhere outside Savannah, Georgia or something. It really does. It looks like an old South. plantation house. Yeah, it looks like looks like pre-war plantation house, but yeah, it is with the big there. columns and everything yeah, like I don't, that. I don't think it is a plantation though. Yeah, so they get there and they can't believe it. They're like, "There's no way this can't be the house that they're renting for yeah. a reasonable." It looks like price. a monument. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so they're like, "Well, they must be a catch, or it must be the guest house, or something like that." So they go in and they meet this brother and sister, Burgess Meredith, who is in a wheelchair, and his sister. They are um, the Allardyces. And they're like, yeah, we want to rent this house to, quote unquote, the right people. Yeah. And you guys can have it for $900 for the whole summer. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only thing they have to do is take care of their mom who's upstairs. Right. Because at first... There's all they, these feeding instructions. They don't tell them that at first. But right. the, I mean, Oliver Reed is, at first, he's kind of like, oh, this man, is too to, good yeah. to be true and shit like yeah. that. And then he's like, what's the catch? What's the catch? And then they kind of get pissy, but they're like, oh, well, okay, there is a catch. Yeah. It's like, we have a mom, Mrs. Yeah. Allardyce, and she's 85. Right. And she can't leave the house because she's in too poor health. She's yeah. just upstairs in her room. Yeah. She'll never come out. You'll never see her. Just got to leave her a tray of food three times three a day. Three times a day. Just take a tray room. out in her sitting room yeah. and everything will be fine. You You're probably right. won't see her. It's fine. 
So at this point, Oliver Reed's like, thank you, bye. And like they leave. But Karen Black. She's like, you uh, you insane? This place is awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, you know? because you can tell as soon as Karen Black like yeah. walked into the house. Yeah. Um, her name's Marion in the movie. Uh, as soon as she walked into the house, she was like in love with the place. Yeah. Now, it's not perfect when you see it. There's yeah. It's a little rundown. There's some shittiness to the house. I yeah. mean, uh, the decor isn't great. A lot of the vegetation's dead. Uh, yeah. some of the carpeting and stuff looks pretty run down. I mean, yeah, like the looks, wallpaper's kind yeah. of peeling. Yeah. I mean, it's still beautiful, but you, you can, can tell it needs work. Yeah, and you, you can tell that it was, had been neglected. And, and Burgess Meredith was like, oh, don't worry about the place. You'll see, uh, it takes care of itself. Yeah. You don't have to do anything, really. Which, you know? red flag. Yeah, red flag. <laughs> but it's a cool flick. I think we should talk about parts of it. It's going to go down... I think along the lines of like legacy and the evil yeah. where a lot of modern audiences probably have never heard of this movie or seen yeah. it. It is worth watching. And I think we should tease the movie, but I don't think we should do too many spoilers yeah. on this one. Kind of like what we did on, uh, on legacy, on legacy, yeah. because we had, we, we had can kind of tap dance. Some of our regulars went back and watched that and go, Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say though, like I said, for younger viewers or people who have ADD or something like that, yeah, n- seven, not judging. Seven um, scores I quite, have heard this yeah. say, people say this is very slow. Yeah. Um, it seems like nothing's happening. It like, is it, though. It it's is not happening. kind of, it's not kind of like yeah. a standard haunted house kind no. of thing where there's ghosts and shit like that you don't see a lot of stuff it's and like i said in that way it's kind of like haunting of hill house where you don't really see anything and you're not really sure well, like, you kind of see real- you, you see stuff they just don't really point it out remember they don't yeah in the background some of the things that i'm saying happening. they don't like you don't see ghosts you know it's like the fucking walls aren't blinking no, or anything uh-uh, like that. no it's nothing you, like there's that. no apparitions it's in very it. low key there's no very appar- low key no apparitions in it but a bunch of paranormal stuff happens yeah and weird visions and stuff. You'll see. It's pretty yeah. cool. But, you know, so it, it kind of transpires that, you know, they, they get left there. Karen Black starts getting obsessed with, like, cleaning the house up. Um, you know, she starts doing her duty and, like, leaving the food for the lady and everything like that. But obviously shit's getting weirder and weirder. Um, a lot of conflict starts developing between, uh, you know, the married couple and everything like that. And then you kind of see the house sort of changing. Yeah. It gets better. Yeah. So, um, and their, their behavior starts to get affected and weird stuff happens. And you know, based on my personal experience, this Hollywood have ne- would never make a movie like this nowadays. There'd be a bunch of CG in it. They'd really fucking blow it. All right. In my experience, this is more like what real paranormal is, is it looks, it, it looks and feels more like this yeah. than it does a modern holiday, uh, a modern Hollywood uh, horror movie. Well, to me, and like I said, and I might have mentioned this on another one, but I do feel like a lot of newer horror movies, at least independent horror movies, seem to be like doing sort of a throwback thing to like the 70s and 80s movies where they're not really showing a lot, where everything is done by like implication or mood and things like that. And I, to me, that is so much creepier. Yeah. Because, and I'm going to use here, here's an example I'm going to use. I mentioned earlier... Um, the Haunting of Hill House, which yeah. actually was written by Shirley Jackson in the 60s, um, or in 1959, rather, and is probably my favorite haunted house novel ever. It is an amazing novel, and you should read it if you haven't. But um, they made a movie of it in 1963, and it stuck very close to the book in that it showed essentially nothing, but was one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. Just everything was subtle and implied and everything was just the way things were shot and the lighting and everything like that and it's really scary but they don't show anything right now in 1999 they remade it and it was just looked like all of cgi had thrown up all over yeah there was ghosts everywhere there was a spider bed there were faces coming out of the wall and shit like that it was retarded and i'm just like why the whole point the whole scariness of the original movie was that you weren't sure you didn't know they didn't show anything right it's like it could have been a haunting it could have been her psychological shit it right. could have been all this stuff but in this one it was just so obvious that that's what it was and it was just it was stupid it looked yeah. so stupid yeah for me the cgi doesn't really work with horror not really. No. It's like, it can be done, but you just rein that shit in yeah. and rein it in. It's got to just kind of enhance certain scenes, yeah. but not necessarily. And I think that that's one of the best things about Burnt Offerings is that they don't 
really show, like, you know something supernatural is going on. Yeah. But it's not super in the forefront. Like, you kind of have to pay attention yeah. to little things that it's, are going on. It, it is kind of like The Shining. It I is mean, very like The Shining. Right. Like the I said, sh- I The Shining think- is a masterpiece, of course. It's oh, a yeah. lot more intense. But this is like, if you like The Shining, you'd like this one. Yeah, it's a similar, th- similar kind of kind theme. Of, yeah. And like I said, I think Stephen King um, was inspired by this as right. well as uh, Haunting of Hill House. When he was writing The Shining, he wanted to write something along that line. I should also note, one of the creepiest things about this movie is that chauffeur. Yeah. Holy shit. I remember him when I was a kid, and they used him in that trailer, and that guy scared the hell out of me when he rolled that damn... Uh, the window of... The, no, no, no. He rolled the... Uh, oh, the coffin. The coffin at that guy. You just, when you see the movie, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, and like... You, you see it now, and you go, well, that's not really a big deal. But back in the day, when you were a kid, you're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? That dude had a coffin. He well, coming at the, you with a coffin, well, man. Well, the creepiest thing about yeah. him was that you didn't... You don't really, know who he is, or You don't really... Like, a lot of it isn't explained. No. Because the chauffeur kind of only turns up because, evidently, Oliver Reed... And they don't really explain a lot of his backstory. A lot of it's just kind of implication. Yeah. You just kind of have to fill I had it to in. see this movie a couple times, I think, really to sort it all yeah. out. Yeah. Like, he has evidently had recurring nightmares yeah. about this chauffeur. He's very... I mean, he doesn't have any makeup on or anything like that. Like, you know, he doesn't look like a monster. He's just a guy, but he's super tall and lanky and he has these dark glasses. You can't see his eyes. And he has like this really, really creepy smile. Yeah, he kind of serves as kind of like the Grim Reaper in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And so Oliver Reed has been having... Kind of reminds me of the guy from Phantasm. Yeah. Kind of like that. Oh, and you know, it's funny you should mention that because the house where Burnt Offerings was filmed Uh is the same house that served as the mortuary in the first Phantasm. Okay. So, woo, segue. Right. All right. (laughs) And I'm glad you said that because I would have forgot to mention it otherwise. So this chauffeur has been appearing in his dream and we're led to believe that this chauffeur was at his mother's funeral and he keeps having like recurring nightmares with him. him. We don't know if that's what the dude really looked like or if this is just, you know, him like reflecting back on his past self and that's like freaking him out because that was a traumatic. Or is the house manifesting itself Or is the house manifesting itself as that? Because it is implied that he had had nightmares about that guy before Yeah. and then they went away and then when he started living in this house, they came back. Right. And what you end up finding out basically just, you know, I'm not going to give it all away as you suffer as the people in the house suffer the house gets stronger right and it starts to kind of rebuild itself or you think it does it's really hard to tell because some things are only seen through char- a certain character's eyes yeah you know like you'll see it when, when you get to that point you know you're like did that really happen or is that person just having a vision you don't know yeah I want to see the movie again it's a good one to watch several times because, like I said, there's yeah. a lot of little bitty details. First time in I there. saw it was a long time ago. I remember liking it, liking it, but I don't remember, didn't remember much about the movie. And then you showed it to me again a couple days ago. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's 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 good. It's pretty yeah. good. But uh, I wasn't able to pick pick up on all of it. You know yeah. I mean? And part of the problem was is that we were watching DVD. Yeah, we don't have the Blu-ray of this. Yeah, yet, the DVD transfer is not. not the audio great. is not that good. The audio mix is very muddy. Right. Um, a lot of times the background music and the score is great. Oh, yeah, but the background music. music is mixed right. very high, right. and the dialogue is mixed very low. So right. you can't really hear what they're saying sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes you it's know very that, muddled. You know that a person that one of the characters said something important. You're like, wait, what would they say? Yeah, yeah you I had to know. like back it up and and um, yeah, but I, I've evidently the Blu-ray is a lot cleaner. Yeah, and uh, I, I would like to get the Blu-ray and put it right right alongside the Legacy Blu-ray. Yeah, we can put all our '70s yeah. haunted house all movies because '70s, '70s horror is kind of like uh, it's an acquired taste, but. We grew up on it, so we yeah. love it. You know, it's, I'm always kind of curious though if people that didn't grow up on it get that same because some people do. I mean, I have yeah. heard like even younger people that were not even born then saying that the old stuff was saying that, they, that the yeah. old stuff was better or that they yeah. liked it better. So, so it m- maybe isn't just an age thing. Like I always thought maybe it was just because that's what I grew up with. That's what I saw when I was yeah. a kid. So that made that's what made the biggest I, impact. I think from that era, the one that would mess me up the most, and we'll do a show on this one too. But I, I want to get a a DVD or a Blu-ray copy. I don't think there's a Blu-ray. It was The Tenet. Roman Polanski. That is a that, fucked up That movie will fuck you and up. Roman Polanski as a person sucks. Yeah, he's but a bad his, guy. But his movies are awesome. And, and when you put him in a horror movie with this character, just the, the creepiness is just 
the tenant is super this, creepy. This guy's such a scumbag, you know. And you, yeah, and I, it's on my list, and I really want to yeah. do this one. And Repulsion is fucking good too. I mean, yeah. Rosemary's Baby, we probably won't do because I love that movie, but you know, everybody, every, knows, everybody knows that one. Yeah. But the Tenant and Repulsion, I think, are a little bit less seen, but I actually I like those better. Yeah. So, um, I definitely want to do the Tenant. That's for sure. Yeah, the Tenant's very disoriented. Yeah. That that one really disturbed me as a kid. Yeah, I even I wrote a big long blog post about yeah. a couple of the scenes think, and it, it freaked think, me out. I would <laughs> like the mo- tooth. Ah! I, would, I would think the millennials and what is it, what's the name of generation uh, what's the new generation generation Y generation Z they would I have, probably I trip yeah, I, I think, think they would wrong. trip out on on the tenant yeah it's the pretty very disorienting it's pretty freaky you're not sure what's real and what isn't in that yeah it's weird because very recently and I know we're kind of going off tangent but that's okay yeah. very recently I saw um, another horror movie I think it was from 2008 or 2009 I want to say and I think it was called Occupant. And it was obviously based on the tenant, or it was inspired by the tenant. It was it wasn't a remake, but it was like a similar kind of premise. And it was actually very good. I was it had that same like disorienting, like kind of surrealistic yeah. kind of, and I love surrealism and horror. When it's yeah. done well, it's it disturbs me more than anything else, which is why I love David Lynch movies so much. But um yeah, I recommend it if you if you like the tenant, if you've seen it, then look out. I don't know, it used to be on Hulu. I don't think it's on uh, Netflix though. But it's called Occupant and it's really good. But um I was gonna say about burnt offerings when you were saying about the first time you'd seen it, I distinctly remember the first time I saw this movie. Mm-hmm. I was in junior high school and my friend Tanya mm-hmm. invited a bunch of us over to her house for a slumber party. Now her parents were very, very wealthy. Mm-hmm. And in the town that I grew up in, um, she lived in a huge, huge house, like on the street where all the quote unquote rich people lived. Yeah. And these were all, yeah, all rich people. These street. were all these weren't like the new rich people houses. These were like old. These were like yeah. all the old houses from the early nineteen hundreds. And um, so their house, and I'm, you know, my broke ass. It's like when I was a kid, I grew up in a trailer park. You know what I mean? I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like a little white trash girl, and I'm going into this house, and I just like could not believe. It. I had only seen houses like this in the movies, right? Like yeah. I walk in, and there's like, there's no shit. There was a marble staircase, like one of the big sweeping marble staircase with the wrought iron, yeah. fucking handrails. There's a big chandelier. Yeah. You go upstairs and there's like all these little like halls and rooms of like servant stairs. So like just like the, the movie, kitchen. just like the yeah. yeah. So it happened that at this slumber party, we had rented a whole bunch of horror movies. Like we had pizza and shit yeah. like that. So we go into this like little maze of the house and we go into this little back room mm-hmm. where there was a little sofa and there was a little attached bathroom with a claw footed tub and all this yeah. other kind of shit. And we put this movie on. Right. We were, okay, we're sitting there with our little blankies and snacks and everything. We were probably 12, 13 years old. And as soon as that fucking chauffeur shows up, everybody noped the fuck out of the room. (laughs) They either jumped under the covers, they ran in the bathroom, like, no, 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 we're out of here. He's an eerie figure in the movie. Because, I mean, the house we were in looked a lot like the house that was in the movie. And we just like, we were like, no, yeah. we're not having it. So everybody just kind of <laughs> scattered. And then we, there was a large debate, if I remember, over whether we should watch yeah. the rest of it or not. I actually don't remember if we watched the rest of it because we were all pretty freaked out. All right. Yeah. So it's a good movie. I recommend it. It really is. If you are into 70s horror, yeah. which may, probably a lot of you people are, and if you're especially into haunted house movies from that era, which is probably yeah. my favorite subgenre of horror. Uh, and you haven't seen it, then you should definitely check it out. It's a great, yeah. like a great cast. And remember, you got to pay close attention to it. Especially yeah, in the it's like you know, it's just little things. They right. don't really spell everything out for you. Like you got to exactly look in the background quite a bit. And, yeah, but that kind of, but it's really cool. Yeah, and uh, and it's definitely one that I try to recommend to people if they've only seen you know the heavyweight kind of movies yeah. from that era. It's kind of one that's a little bit overlooked. I feel like. Yeah, it's a good one. It's underrated. Yeah, it is. So that'll do it for our first movie review of 2018. Please remember to check out our Patreon page or our PayPal if you would like to support the show. Yeah. And be sure to check out our regular episodes that come out every Tuesday. And we will see you next time. Bye.